It's been an intense couple of days in AI, with almost every major player dropping something new. So, OpenAI has been testing a new memory feature in ChatGPT, and at the same time, rumors about GPT 5.2 are getting louder. China's DeepSeek stunned the industry again with its new V3.2 model that somehow matches GPT-5 performance using a fraction of the compute budget. Amazon showed up with a new AI chip and an autonomous coding agent that can literally work for days on its own. Mistral rolled out a full open source model family under Apache 2.0. Runway dropped a cinematic Gen 4.5 video model. And Kling AI is about to push out a version that finally generates video and audio in the same pass Y. So yeah, a lot to unpack here. So let's talk about it. All right, starting with OpenAI, people noticed something new showing up inside ChatGPT, a memory search option. It briefly appeared for some users before disappearing again, which usually means internal testing is happening. The core concept stays simple yet surprisingly effective. Instead of scrolling through dozens of stored memory entries trying to find something you told ChatGPT weeks ago, you'll be able to just ask it directly and it'll pull that info from your stored data instantly. It's meant to fix one of the most annoying parts of the memory interface, the clutter that builds up over time. What's interesting is that this looks almost identical to something already in the Atlas browser. Atlas has what they call browser memory, where users can search through everything they've seen or saved. Even the icons look nearly the same, which people noticed immediately. The feature isn't publicly available yet, but its brief appearance inside ChatGPT strongly suggests it's either being internally tested or slowly rolled out. OpenAI seems to be doubling down on better context handling, which makes sense as their models become more agentic. Memory is the one thing that keeps ChatGPT from feeling truly persistent, so a searchable version makes the assistant feel a lot more like a long-term partner than just a chat window. And this might not be the only thing on the way. Inside the company, reports say OpenAI is under a bit of pressure after Google's Gemini 3 launch, which apparently captured some of OpenAI's user base. Some sources even described it as a code red situation, meaning they're speeding up internal development to regain ground. That's why a lot of people think GPT 5.2 could arrive sooner than expected, possibly even before the year ends. If it drops around the same time as memory search, it would be a clear strategic move to remind everyone that OpenAI still leads when it comes to practical AI for productivity. It would also fit the pattern we've seen before. When competition heats up, OpenAI pushes updates faster. But the competition right now is fiercer than it's ever been, and one of the main reasons is a company out of Hangzhou called DeepSeek. They just released their V3.2 AI model, and the numbers are wild. It performs on par with GPT-5 in reasoning benchmarks while using far fewer total training flops. That's not just a technical detail, it's a complete shift in how people might think about building powerful AI. Instead of throwing billions of dollars in compute at a model, DeepSeek managed to hit frontier-level performance by being smart with its architecture. The whole thing is open source, and it lets organizations deploy advanced reasoning and agentic models without handing everything to a big US cloud provider. There are two versions, the base DeepSeek V3.2 and the DeepSeek V3.2 Special. The special one is the monster. It scored gold medal level on the 2025 International Mathematical Olympiad and the International Olympiad in Informatics. That's territory previously reached only by unreleased internal models from the top US labs. The base model itself hit 93.1% accuracy on AIM 2025 math problems and scored a 2,386 rating on Code Forces, both right next to GPT-5 and reasoning benchmarks. For a company that's working with restricted access to advanced semiconductors, this is a huge deal. DeepSeek basically proved that with the right architecture, you can compete with the best, even when you don't have NVIDIA's latest chips. All right. Quick moment here to highlight something new in the AI video space that's worth knowing about. Pooldate.ai stepped in to support today's video, and they're launching something different from the usual AI tools we see every week, a fully AI native video editor. Not a generator glued onto an editor, not an editor patched with a few AI buttons, but one timeline where you generate, edit, and automate everything in one place. You run VO, Kling, Flux, Seadream, and more, directly on the timeline without exporting or jumping through five different tools. Their agent system handles the repetitive editing work, cutting, resizing, syncing, so you spend your time on the creative side instead of micro-tweaking clips. Fastlane stack multiple models into one clean workflow. 
script to images, images to video, video to voiceover, all inside the same interface. For creators, teams, agencies, and anyone building content at scale, the whole thing feels simple, fast, and organized because everything finally sits in one timeline. Use my code below to get early access during the launch window and test it out before it opens up wider. All right, now back to DeepSeek. Their key innovation is something called DeepSeek Sparse Attention, or DSA. Traditional transformer attention scales with the square of the sequence length written out as O of L squared, which gets insanely expensive as you increase context size. DSA changes that. It introduces what they call a lightning indexer that selects only the most relevant tokens for each query, cutting complexity down to O of L times K, where K is a fraction of the total sequence. In simpler terms, it stops wasting compute on irrelevant tokens and focuses only on what actually matters. They trained it from their previous checkpoint, DeepSeek V 3.1 Terminus, using 943.7 billion tokens and 480 sequences of 128,000 tokens per training step. The results show up not only in benchmarks, but also in how efficiently it reasons during multi-turn conversations. One clever addition in V3.2 is how it handles tool use. Older reasoning models often discarded their thinking between turns, which meant they had to redo reasoning steps every time the user sent a new message. DeepSeek's architecture keeps those reasoning traces if only tool-related messages are added, so it doesn't waste tokens re-explaining its logic. That change alone makes a massive difference for agent workflows. Think autonomous research, multi-step coding, or financial planning, because it makes the model act less like a forgetful assistant and more like a steady coworker. Now, on Terminal Bench 2.0, which measures coding workflow accuracy, it scored 46.4%. On SWE Verified, it hit 73.1%, and on SWE Multilingual, 70.2%. Those are enterprise-level results, showing it can actually handle production coding and problem solving. The team behind it went deep into agentic training too, creating over 1,800 simulated environments and 85,000 multi-step prompts so the model could learn how to generalize its reasoning in unfamiliar tool scenarios. For companies that need autonomy and transparency, DeepSeek made the base model open on Hugging Face. The special version, though, stays API only because of its high token use. That's their way of balancing accessibility and cost efficiency. The reaction from the research community was immediate. Susan Zhang from Google DeepMind praised DeepSeek's technical documentation, especially how they stabilized post-training behavior. And at Neurips in San Diego, the news basically exploded. Group chats across labs were filled with people talking about it. Some experts like Florian Brand, who focus on China's open source ecosystem, said it's one of the few cases where an open source model actually competes at the very top level. DeepSeek also admitted that it still lags behind in world knowledge and token efficiency efficiency compared to models like Gemini 3 Pro, since it used less total compute. But they're already working on scaling pre-training resources and improving reasoning chain efficiency. For a lab under export restrictions, what they pulled off is borderline historic. Meanwhile, Mistral AI, out of France, just reminded everyone why open source momentum keeps growing. They launched the full Mistral, three family, three compact dense models at 3 billion, 8 billion, and 14 billion parameters, and the flagship Mistral Large 3, with a sparse mixture of experts architecture. The large version uses 41 billion active parameters out of a total of 675 billion, meaning it activates different expert paths depending on the task. Everything's fully open source under the Apache 2.0 license, so developers and enterprises can deploy it freely without worrying about restrictive terms. It's already available on basically every platform. Mistral AI Studio, Amazon Bedrock, Hugging Face, Modal, Open Router, etc. Under the hood, Mistral Large 3 was trained using 3000 NVIDIA H200 GPUs and features Blackwell attention kernels, meaning it's built to run fast on modern NVIDIA infrastructure. It also shows strong multilingual and multimodal performance, the kind of balance that makes it usable globally. The smaller Ministral 3 models scale from edge devices to full data centers, each one coming in base, instruct, and reasoning variants, with image understanding built in. They're provided in NVFP4 format, which is optimized for VLLM and NVIDIA hardware. That makes them extremely efficient for inference, even on mid-range GPUs. 
For developers building local or hybrid AI setups, this release feels like a gift. Everything's permissively licensed, lightweight, and already tuned for modern GPUs. Industry reactions have been overwhelmingly positive, mainly because of Mistral's commitment to open weights, multilingual capabilities, and close collaboration with NVIDIA and Red Hat. It's one of the few big labs keeping open source momentum alive while everyone else locks things down. Another name that's been buzzing lately is Kling AI, the Chinese company owned by Kuaishou the same giant behind several short video apps. They're about to launch Kling 2.6, and this version might finally close the one big gap their video models had, sound. The update integrates native audio generation directly into the video model. That means spoken dialogue, singing, and even ambient sound effects come out in the same pass as the visuals. Their tagline for this one is, see the sound, hear the visual which sums it up perfectly. Internal leaks show Kling 2.6 Pro will include full multimodal support video, audio, and image-to-video workflows with global market audio in English and Chinese. A big step forward because previous versions like Kling 2.5 and Kling Omni had amazing visual fidelity, but lacked built-in speech. Now, they'll go head-to-head -head with models like OpenAI's Sora 2 and Google's VO 3.1, both of which already include audio support. The launch is expected around December 3rd during Kling Omni Launch Week, where the company is unveiling five new releases. If the schedule holds, Kling 2.6 will roll out first inside their web tools and partner platforms before hitting wider availability. And since Kuaishou's ecosystem already reaches hundreds of millions of users, it's not just another model update, it's a direct route to massive adoption. Speaking of multimodal systems, Runway also showed up with something big, Gen 4.5, their new video generation model that's already topping the Video Arena leaderboard. It scored 1,247 ELO points on the Artificial Analysis Text-to-Video benchmark, outperforming every other model currently available. Runway says Gen 4.5 brings cinematic level visual fidelity and physical accuracy, powered by NVIDIA Hopper and Blackwell GPUs. The improvements go deep, more efficient pre-training data use, new post-training methods, and optimized inference. It generates complex scenes with realistic object motion and emotional nuance things earlier models struggled with. It keeps all the previous control modes like image to video and keyframes so users can transition smoothly. The only remaining challenges are small lapses in causal reasoning or object permanence, which basically means that every now and then, an object might disappear or shift incorrectly. But overall, it's a major leap for AI-generated film and advertising workflows. Runway's rollout is happening gradually across subscription plans, with full access expected within days. Then we have Amazon, which decided to hit two different fronts at once, hardware and autonomous agents. At AWS reInvent, they unveiled three new AI agents they're calling Frontier Agents. The one grabbing everyone's attention is called Kiro, an autonomous coding agent that can literally work on its own for days. It learns how a development team codes, picks up on their style, and then keeps going with minimal supervision. You can assign it a complex task from your backlog, and it figures out the rest. It's based on AWS's existing Kiro tool that launched in July, but this version adds something called spec-driven development. As Kiro writes code, it constantly checks with the user to confirm or correct assumptions, which then become specifications the agent can follow later by itself. Over time, it learns how the team works and deepens its understanding of the company's products and coding standards. AWS claims it can maintain persistent context across sessions, meaning it doesn't lose memory or forget what it was doing. That's a huge deal, because it means you can literally hand it a task that takes hours or even days, and it won't drop the thread. Matt Garman, AWS's CEO, showed an example during his keynote updating a piece of code used by 15 different parts of a system. Normally, you'd have to do each one manually, verify it, and push the changes safely. With Kiro, you can just tell it to fix all 15 instances, and it handles the entire thing in one go. That's where this shift toward autonomous agents becomes real, not just for experiments, but for enterprise software workflows. Alongside Kiro, AWS also introduced two companion agents, the AWS Security Agent, which identifies security issues as code is written and even suggests fixes, and the DevOps Agent, which tests performance and compatibility automatically before new code goes live. Together, they're aiming to make entire software pipelines run with 
minimal human babysitting. Of course, AWS isn't the only company building long-running agents. OpenAI's GPT 5.1 Codex Max already claimed it could operate continuously for up to 24 hours, but Amazon's trying to show that it can take that same concept and scale it across infrastructure. The real bottleneck for these systems isn't just the context window, it's accuracy and hallucination control. If Kiro really can maintain persistent context without making dumb logic mistakes, it could change how development teams operate altogether. Now, Amazon also announced a brand new AI chip Tranium 3, which boosts performance across the board. Compared to the previous Tranium 2, it offers 4.4 times more compute performance, four times the energy efficiency, and nearly four times the memory bandwidth. Those numbers are significant because they directly affect how fast and cheaply you can train large models. The chip powers their Tranium 3 Ultra servers, designed for massive AI workloads, and comes with advanced design optimizations to speed up data flow between chips and avoid memory bottlenecks in large architectures. Energy efficiency improved by 40% compared to previous generations, which at AWS scale means huge cost and environmental savings. Amazon even confirmed they're already working on Tranium 4, which will support NVIDIA's new NVLink Fusion Interconnect for even faster chip-to-chip -chip communication. The direction is clear they're building an AI hardware stack that competes directly with NVIDIA's dominance while keeping everything in-house for AWS cloud clients. Now, back to OpenAI, because they quietly slipped another surprise into Thier Android app code references, hinting that ads are coming to ChatGPT. In the latest beta version, strings mentioning ads feature, bizarre content, search ad, and search ads carousel were spotted. That basically confirms the company's preparing to integrate ads, likely around shopping and recommendation queries. Instead of inserting random ads into your chats, it looks like they'll appear as sponsored cards or product suggestions when you ask about commercial topics, kind of like how Google's AI overviews or Microsoft's Copilot handle it. There's even a mention of bizarre content, which sounds like a marketplace component for sponsored products. It's a logical move. OpenAI's free users create massive operational costs and ad integration could help subsidize that while keeping premium tiers ad-free. It also shows how AI assistants are merging with traditional search business models. Perplexity AI already does this, embedding sponsored prompts beside normal ones, and it's been profitable. If OpenAI follows the same route, ChatGPT could slowly evolve into a commercial discovery engine. It's a delicate balance, too many ads could ruin the experience, but done right, it might finally make the free tier financially sustainable. All right, that's the roundup. Subscribe if you haven't already, drop a comment with which of these updates impressed you the most. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.